Welcome to another episode of One on One with Mitch LaFon. I am your host, Mitch LaFon. Joining me this week is Work of Art, great band out of Sweden, and John Thayer. Um, you know, you might know his brother, Tommy Thayer, who is in Kiss. And making his return to the show is the one, the only, Russell Dwarf, Rust Dwarf from the Killer Dwarves. Good day, sir. You have been missing in action. Yeah, buddy. How you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Hope Year you had to a you. good holiday. Absolutely. And, uh, and, great uh, to talk to you again. And uh, yeah, no, I've been uh, just uh, laying low. Well, you had a bunch of tour dates and, and stuff that, that sort of kept you off the show. And then, of course, Christmas came and, and I wasn't yeah. recording shows. So you're back. I'm back. Yeah, we've been all over the place. And uh, now I'm back home and uh, we're getting gearing up to have another fun year of rock and roll. That's right. So you're you're kind of back in the New York groove because we got a we've got a Kiss Spaceman thing going on today. So there you go. We got to be love in Ace. that. Gotta love Ace Man. Yeah, you do, and you got to love Tommy. Tommy does a great job. Really yep. does. Definitely, so, absolutely. Let's let's. So what, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say. So what's uh, what are we gonna talk about today? Well, we're gonna talk about work of art, and of course, we're gonna talk about you first, real quick. Uh, okay. You know, you've got a couple of great shows coming up in May in Toronto on the 30th and the 31st in Ottawa with Mike Tramp. You're both going to be doing acoustic sets. Now, I know Mike does his solo stuff and some of the White Line stuff. What are you doing? Are you doing some of the Penny Black and some of the other stuff? Or is this going to yeah. be all Killer Dwarves? Uh, it'll be, you know, a lot of the wireless album, the the Dwarf stuff. And uh, I'll probably do some of my, my, my originals from Penny and... Uh, just whatever. That it's a fun gig, and uh, the two Bobs are with me, and uh, we always have a great time doing that. And we're looking forward to uh, hanging with Mike, and uh, it should be fun. Oh, and my, hopefully, my, the weather's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, listen. Almost June, it should be good. Uh, speaking uh, of, um, since we're doing Kiss today, will you uh, do Hard Luck Woman for me acoustically? Finally. I, I think I'm gonna have to. Yeah, so yeah. when we when we do the Ottawa gig, uh, I'll make sure we we put it in the set for you. Maybe yeah. you can come up and and sing along. That's right. Or or wave the album that it was on. Now you yeah. know uh, you mentioned wireless for folks that haven't picked it up. Russ did a uh, acoustic album last year where he redid some of the Killer Dwarves stuff and some other stuff. Features uh, guest performances by Bumblefoot, who was in Guns and Roses, and other people. It's a great sounding album. So if you haven't picked it up, head over to iTunes, Amazon, wherever you can get it. But mm -hmm. certainly make sure you pick up Wireless. Uh, will there be a Wireless 2, by the way? Actually, we're right in the planning stages of doing something else this year. I have a couple things going on, and uh, there's going to be some new Killer Dwarf music yes. uh, this year as well. So it should be a, a busy year for uh, actual new tunes and stuff. Yeah, and of course, uh, you, you just heard me mention Hard Luck Woman for the for, for those of you who haven't done it yet. Uh, Kiss tribute album features uh, mm. called A World with Heroes. Features uh, Russ doing uh, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, Hard Luck Woman, and other mm. uh, backup on Deuce. And of course, there's the A World with Heroes EP where the Killer Dwarves mm -hmm. do Come On and Love Me and Russ. Nothing to lose, there man. Yeah, and that one was kind of cool because we got Bruce Foster, the piano yep. player on the original version of, from 1973, who was on the Kiss album, to come and re recut yeah. his piano parts on this one. So that was kind of cool. Well, that was fun. We had a blast doing that. That was because we're all we're all huge Kiss fans as yeah. well. So, and of that, course, that, the money goes to the palliative care home in Hudson, yeah. Quebec. Um, the Vaudreuil Soulange Palliative Care Home is. is oh no! How, how much have you raised so far for that? Uh, a little over thirty thousand. That's amazing! What a, what a great though? what a great thing! That's just incredible! Yeah, absolutely awesome! Uh, happy to be a part of it. Yeah, and and that's what's good about it being on iTunes is that it's in perpetuity. It'll be there forever, and people can go pick it up. And unlike the CDs. We don't have to have that expense of putting together the physical product, which takes a lot of the money away from the home and goes to manufacturing. So I'm glad that we did the initial run, but I'm glad that it's on iTunes now. It makes it a lot more convenient for everybody. Um, the other big news is you're going to be playing the M3 Festival. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, tell us about that. Where is that? It's down in Maryland, I guess. It's in Maryland. I, I think it's is it Columbia, Maryland? Uh, I guess I'll find out when I get there. But uh, no, it's going to be great. It's, <laughs> Your it's chauffeur almost, will get you there. You have nothing yes, to my worry. Yes, my chauffeur. <laughs> but I, it's almost like uh, the Mort Cruise on land kind of thing. That's mm-hmm. what it, it looks like, and a lot of gr- it's a great lineup and. Uh, you know, a good friend of mine, uh, Darren Smith, he played there last year and said it was amazing. And, and Luke Carl's going to be there and a lot of our pals and stuff. So we're really looking forward to it. And to top it off, it's it's Daryl Dwarf's birthday, the day we play. So, See, how you know, ha- happy 29th. Now, of course, Dar- uh, Darren is with um, Darren Red Smith, Dragon of course, Cartel. Red Dragon Cartel. And before that, Harem Scarum. And so, Correct. Uh, they, by and the way, was- have a new album called 13, which is phenomenal. Really yeah, that's a great, great album. album. They're so talented, those guys. Yep. Oh, Dar- absolutely. Darren was actually at my house on New Year's Eve wrecking my house. So well, that's, that's what you a, want. We rung in the the new year. <laughs> um. So let's talk framework. Oh, but, but who else is on the the uh, M three festival? By the way, I think Europe is headlining and uh, final countdown. Uh, Tom, uh, Tom Kiefer, his solo thing. Uh, I think. Uh, let's see. Kix is on it. A whole bunch of great. Uh, Great bands, Vixen and Good. I think Bang Tango and The Killer Dwarfs. There you go. As it should whack. be. It's been yeah. a while. It's going to be fun. I heard it's really uh, fun. Everybody that's been said it was a great time. And so, you know, come out if you can. Now we just got to get you on the uh, heavy Montreal bill. I know. That's that's what we got to work on. But okay, let's, uh, All right. let's talk work of art. Let's not let the people wait uh, too yeah. long. Work of art. Uh, like we said on the top of the show, Band Out of Sweden, three albums. The latest is called Framework. And, uh, you know, I was speaking with uh, Andrew McNeese over at MelodicRock.com. He's the owner over there. And I said, Andrew, I, I need some new music. I've, I've exhausted my, my listening ears for, for the Kiss and the Cheap Trick and the Van Halen. And, the... Mm-hmm. and he said, well, try Work of Art. Uh, you know, and and I tried it, and it is really sort of like Toto meets Journey. It's, it's got this melodic side. It's 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 re- you know it's really radio friendly. Uh, it's really great, and and I ended up putting it on my best of 2014 list. And I think at some point we should probably have a, a conversation about some of those albums. But uh, mm. you know, I, I liked it so much that I tracked down the guys and uh, their guitarist Robert Saul and Herman Furin uh, sat down with me, and we we went over the band's history and the making of the album, what's coming up next, and of course Robert also does extra work with a band called W. E. T. or Wet, uh, with uh, uh, Jeff Scott Soto as the lead singer and uh, another great project that he's involved with. So, great, great stuff. Now, you're not so familiar with these guys, are you? Uh, I'm not. I'm just getting to hear them through you, and, uh, you know, it's, like you said, it's always great to hear new new, new tunes. And uh, Yeah, I and really think they have a future, these guys. That's awesome. And, you know, they're just starting to happen over here, right? You're helping them. Helping. We're, we're trying to get them some attention. Yeah. And... Um, you know, are are you a fan of that kind of music? Are are you all Black Sabbath and Kiss, or do you have room in your heart you know, for Journey and Toto? If it's good, I like it. You know, I I love all kinds of music. Like as you know, I'm a huge Elvis fan, and but I love you know Journey and Toto and all all you know all that genre. If it's good, like it's good. It's, there's no doubt about it, right? Yeah. So there you go. Now, yeah. uh, you know, listen. Why don't we stop chatting? Cause we've, we've done a big upfront here of about yeah. eight or nine minutes. Why don't we uh, give way to both Robert and Herman and work of art? Here they are. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Me too. So, you know, I discovered work of art through uh, a gentleman called Andrew McNeese, who runs MelodicRock.com. And uh, this summer, I was on a quest for new music. I love Kiss, I love Aerosmith, I love Cheap Trick, but it's been 40 years, and I said, I, I need new music. I, I got to that point. And he recommended two bands only, Eclipse, which of course has Eric Martinson, and he mentioned you guys. And Ooh. I went to YouTube, and I saw a video called The Machine. And that was it. That's all it took. It took that <laughs> one song, and I said, wow, these guys are great. 
so you know uh, right away i got the album framework and he here we are talking and interviewing because i've got to let the world know about uh work of art so so tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about how a little bit about the store for people who don't know it how did you get together and all that wonderful stuff yeah i think herman can can tell that story pretty accurate yeah um me and Robert met in uh, high school. Mm -hmm. We went to a music high school school in, in Stockholm. And uh, we kind of figured out instantly that we were the only ones with a proper music taste. Um, we, well, we, wait, wait a minute here. If I look at your <laughs> bio, your first album was ABBA Visitors. And if I look at his bio, it was ACDC for those about to rock. So... <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. So, so water, water under the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know, we, we share a love for Toto, right? Uh, and um, kind of went from there, actually. And we we, we formed a band in you know in the first few months in school, and uh, had great plans, of course. Um, but um, we we had some problems getting a, a great singer. Uh, but but I brought in, brought in my my very good friend Lars, who was then the, our keyboard player. Right, and he and, was also uh, in Lionsville at that point, or he was singing. No 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 no, no, no. that's much it, later. This oh. is in ninety two. Oh, okay. Nineteen ninety two. Okay, 19, okay. <laughs> we we were just kids, and and um, well, uh, we tried some singers, but it didn't really work out. So it kind of put the band on ice for a while. Then later on, Lars started to sing and, and actually was phenomenal. So he was an awesome singer. And we, we, why not try Lars? And I think Robert, you were a bit hesitant at first. Yeah, I thought it was. I, I thought it was. Um, I thought we should try to find a, a quote unquote real singer at first. And like, <laughs> and like Lars, Lars my, maybe was the second choice because he was in at least in my head he was still a keyboard player. Right. And, and and like a background uh, singer, but uh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, I listen to the finished product now and listen to the albums now, and his voice is nothing I've heard before. It's fantastic. Back it then, is. was he still in development? Was he still learning oh, yeah. the art? What was sort of the hesitation? Because if I hear that voice today, I go, dude, he's in my band. So yeah, no. Yeah, but but the thing is, oh sorry, but um, uh, back then he, he never really sang lead. He did some backup vocals and right. it's all good, but he never took place like a lead singer. He was a keyboard player and the greatest guy ever, and just great to work with. But he never stepped up as a singer. But I have a specific memory when getting to his mother's house and some like when we were. 17, 18 or something, um, and I heard him from outside the street singing along to um, Endless by Toto. Right. And tried to, to reach the high notes like Ferdy Fredrickson, but couldn't really get there. But he, he like you said, he was in development. And uh, he, he got to work as a singer uh, from early 20s or so. You know, and by the I'm way, just... it's funny you mentioned Toto. I was just sent their new album today to to preview. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm. It's listen, it's great. Uh, <laughs> you, the band is described, uh, not um, not wet, but work of art is described as Toto meets Journey. That's that's how it's been written in all the press releases. Is that how you would describe the sound? I can live with that. Sure, oh, sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Two of my favorite bands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, Toto in particular has been a, a huge influence on us. Yeah, Journey maybe not so much. That came later for us. I didn't listen to Journey growing uh, growing up. Okay, but uh, I can see the similarities absolutely. Sure. So, so tell me about you know getting together and putting that first album artwork together. Um, you know the, the the sort of Toto journey melodic rock thing isn't really the current currency in North America, and even you know a lot of the world is on to other things. Um, did you think, oh boy, we, our sound is dated, or we're <laughs> going to be so good that we're going to create a new wave? 
<laughs> or, you just sort of, or there was none of this it was just like listen we're, we're just gonna do, i mean did you see this as a career or as a hobby to start uh actually i think we saw this because uh, like herman told earlier right we, we we formed this band in high school and then once we were once we finished high school we kind of put the band on on ice so to speak because um like you said there were and the the, the scene for this kind of miss was pretty much dead in Sweden, I think uh, anywhere in the '90s, it was kind of a very unhip style of music to play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so we didn't really see how we could um, go anywhere with this kind of music. So it wasn't until like uh, ten years later, in 2005, uh, then we then we that that, that we um, uh, said that let's give it another try because then the scene had started to change for the better. I think there were a couple of. Uh, records that came out ar around 2005 that uh, uh, was really inspiring for me to to get back into doing this kind of music. Which ones? Uh, like Yearn's Arrival, okay, and uh, Pride of Lions' uh, first uh, album, the Jim Patrick uh, Project. Yes. The, those those two albums were very crucial for me, uh, wanting to go back to doing this kind of music again. Yeah, th th those are great albums. Uh, yeah, th let, let's speak a little bit about Sweden these days. With uh, Wet, with Eclipse, with you guys, there there seems to be uh, you know there seems to be this revival of melodic rock. What is it about Sweden where all these great bands are coming from? <laughs> what do you think, Herman? Well, I I think we have uh, had in Sweden um, a, a kind of melodic uh, upbringing. The Swedish music is. Mm -hmm. Often melodic, like for instance, ABBA. Mm -hmm. It's very melodic music, even if Absolutely. it's pop. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and and the, the Swedish songwriters, which are kind of in demand right now, also is melody makers like Max Martin or or whoever. Um, they have a strong sense of of melody, uh, and I think that kind of shows. Then um, this mus this kind of music never really died as much as in the U.S. I think. Right. And for for instance, Toto came here. I don't know how many times. They toured Europe like every year um, during the nineteen nineties also, and I never think they did the U.S. back then. So the the, the scene was not completely dead, but but. Um, it's first uh, very low, <laughs> low key. Right, it was it, it was down They're underground. <laughs> yeah, is there you know because I'm looking at it from a Canadian perspective, where I see all these bands from uh, that country coming yeah. out. Is there really a big scene, or is it just sort of the best of the best are trickling back to me in Canada? And, and you know, like Heat, there's another one I forget. Yeah, uh, and, and do I go, oh wow, there's a whole big scene over there? Or am I just lucky that I've discovered the the three, four, five really good bands? No, I think the scene is rather big here. Okay. Um, but it's not. I mean, it's big in the sense that there are a lot of people doing this kind of music, and especially in the last couple of two or three years, I've, we've yeah. seen a lot of new bands. So it's it's really growing here as well with a lot of, of uh, younger bands who are yeah. making this music, which is uh, which is great to see. But but from a, a commercial standpoint, it's it's not a very popular style of music in Sweden. I mean, you don't get to hear it on the radio or see it on the television or anything. So it's still underground, I would say, but, but uh, it's, a, it's a fairly big scene. It really is. So let's, let's talk about Framework, the, uh, the most recent album. Um, you know, when Andrew McNeese at M Melodic Rock suggested it to me, you know, I, I looked at the cover and I saw the machine and I was like, okay, I'm in. And th the thing is brilliant, so much so that I made a best 14 uh, albums for 2014, and, and I had to include it. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank absolutely you so much. had to include it. So, so tell me about working on that album. What were you sort of, what were you trying to achieve with it? And where does that leave us in terms of the fourth album? What, what's next for you guys? Um, Don't tell me you've broken up now. <laughs> no, no. Okay. We just did it. No, good. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, going into this album, right? I think uh, the, the mindset was just to like combine the two, the, our two first albums, 
and kind of take the best out of those two albums and put it into to, to into this new album. Take the best of what we had done so far, and 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 try to 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 stay in the same style because by by now uh, our fans are kind of expecting a certain sound from us. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to to continue doing just that, but doing it even better. I think so, so that uh, we, we always try to. Uh, you always try to 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 write a little better, to play a little better, yeah. to 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 like uh, bring the pr- production up a couple of notch, and everything. So that was basically it, and and that uh, and that is, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's what we will try to do in the future as well. Just keep going. Are you writing for a fourth record right now, or are you sort of happy with this one? And talk to me in 2016. Yeah, probably. I That's... mean, right right now we're kind of enjoying the success this album is having, yeah. and 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 we always take. I mean, we take it one album by at the time. Yeah. Then and then we'll see, but right now we we're, we're we're just enjoying this album, and uh, and then in 2016 maybe we'll see. <laughs> How do you build a a fan base uh, these days? You know, a lot's been said about downloading and internet and all this wonderful stuff uh how do you manage to stay a band and keep moving forward in this day and age i think i think uh, to, to to build a fan base uh, we were lucky in the sense that the, that we actually started out in 2008 and two, and not uh, in, in this year i would i think because there were uh, uh, there weren't that many bands bands around, right? And right. and Frontiers uh, did did a great job promoting us right yeah. from the beginning. So and actually sure. even before our first album came out, we had some demos uh, uploaded on MySpace, which was very popular back then yep. in two thousand and seven. I think this was, yep. and uh, and it created quite a buzz even before the album was out. So there were a lot of word of mouth going on as well. Plus that, uh, plus uh, the promotion that Frontiers gave us. So I think th- that really ha- helped us uh, I- I from the beginning. And now it's it's so easy to, to 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 share and spread music. So I think it's a, a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with the word of mouth. Yeah, you know, as well. Frontiers has become such a great label. When Frontiers yeah. started, and I guess it must be ten or fifteen years ago. That's where careers went to die. I mean, you know, if you, <laughs> I mean, it really was. Yeah, I know. And all of a sudden, they've just become this machine that keeps. See, they were back to the machine, that, and they just keep putting <laughs> up, you know, and they keep putting these projects together. So, actually, let, let me get to that then, Robert. Yeah. Um, was it Frontiers that put you together with Jeff Scott Soto and Eric Martinson to form WET, or otherwise yeah. known as Wet? Yeah, it was, and um, the original idea was not. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, the name. We didn't. We, it wasn't meant to be a band. It was like you said. It was meant to be a project, like the ones that Frontiers put together. Right, and they and they do. <laughs> they do these yeah. incredibly great projects. There's yeah. one called um, Revolution Saints that comes out in in March of 2015. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've had the album for two months. It yeah. is fantastic. Oh, okay. And, you know, I really want to hear that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but go ahead. So tell me about Wet. So so how did that come together? Oh, so anyway, um, Frontiers president Serafino, mm-hmm. uh, his idea was to have six of my songs uh, and six of Eric's songs on an album, and then have Jeff Soto singing them. Mm-hmm. So that was his, that that was the original plan for Wet. Uh, and Eric and I go way back. We went to school also together. Uh, and we had and we had wanted to do uh, some kind of a project together for I mean like ten years. So this was the perfect opportunity for me and Eric to, to work together on something. Uh, but then, as uh, as the, the, the as the album as the work on the album uh, went on, uh, and and Jeff got really into it, we felt like it, this is more than actually a one-off project. This is this is more like a band situation because we all enjoyed working together so much, mm-hmm. and, and everything really worked out uh, great so so we kind of decided to to take it one step further and make it into a real band so how do you decide when you're writing what is a work of art song and what is a wet song like is there a way to tell or you just sort of write the best songs you can and whatever project is up that's who the songs go to yeah usually it is like that but also with wet it's easy because that uh, because with wet 
uh, me and Eric get together and write together. Mm-hmm. And the songs that we write is the songs that are gonna end up on a wet album. Okay. So um, that's yeah. yeah, you know, Wet has a an album called Rise Up. And if anybody listening to this hasn't heard it, you absolutely have to buy that. Another stroke of genius. And just a brilliant <laughs> album. Uh then you had the um the live album from Stockholm. Yeah. What's going on with Wet? Are you sort of bouncing between projects? Is it Work of Art was 2014, Wet 2015? Sort of what's what's next with with that? And do you stay with uh, Jeff Scott as the singer? Yeah, I mean, right now there there aren't any plans. But actually, we haven't. That's discussed, terrible news. We haven't discussed anything yet. <laughs> but this is okay. this is always the way. Uh, this is the way it has been uh, al- always with this band. Okay. Uh, is we do. Uh, I mean, we do. We have our own uh, main band, so to speak, and we do an album with. For me, for with work of art, Eric does an Eclipse album. Jeff do does whatever he's doing at the moment, and then uh, we get together and do a wet album. And right now, Eclipse uh, are about to to release a new album, and also Jeff. I think later this month we'll release his latest uh, album. Right, Soto, so right and then now, Armageddonized for Eclipse. Yeah, exactly. So now it's uh, the, the focus is on our main band, so to speak. After right. that, we'll see what happens. Um, tell me a little bit about Eric for for fans in North America who don't know him. I mean, he's with uh, Aji Sten Nilsson in Ammunition. He did some stuff on Lionsville. He does uh, stuff with Wet. He does Eclipse. The man is all over the place. Um, <laughs> yeah, he is. What's it? I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it, tell, it, tell me it, about Eric. It, it, I think it, it it has happened gradually. You know, from working on one project to another project, and then uh, every and all of a sudden, he's becoming this uh, in demand guy that everybody wants to work with mm-hmm. because they love his productions and his songwriting. Uh, so, so I think, I mean, if you look back at this last couple of two or three years, uh, I mean, his career has really took off, I, I would say. Oh, yeah, absolutely so, taken off. Yeah, so, so uh, things are going great for him. And he, he's a hardworking guy, so he deserves it. Now, work of art, as far as I know, has only played one North American date in or in and yeah. around Chicago on the Melodic yeah. Rock Fest. Correct. Um uh, any plans to come over here? And if not, can you tell me a little bit about the difficulties in getting to North America? Well, I, I think the the it's the same for almost every country to go to. It's it's all about the money mm-hmm. and costs a lot, uh, and, and you never know who, if the crowd shows up. Shows up. Right. We've, we've been lucky to to play in, in a few countries and have. Uh, Quite large audiences. Right. We're we're so happy with the with the crowds, um, but but you know we we all have work, so we we just can't go right <laughs> for for nothing. So uh, it costs a lot to to fly five people over to to the U.S. and, and everything around with with, with uh, hotels and and everything. You know. Yeah. Not that it, not that, it, that we don't want to. We would love to. Right. And of course, a lot of people don't know that when you come into a country to play, you have to pay all kinds of either taxes oh, yeah, sure. or uh, oh, yeah. all kinds working of uh, visas. Uh, well, it's right. The uh, the working right. visas. Yep. It's yeah. it's not as easy as some fans would think that you just hop in a van or hop on a plane and, no. oh, ta-da, exactly. we're playing in Toronto tonight. Exactly. It doesn't work and, and, that way. And I just heard that it's, it's going to be even harder to get into the U.S. now. Uh-huh. So, so, uh, but I think I think for yeah. a band like us, the, the 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 best way to go about it is to do these festival gigs when the, yeah. when you get a, 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 I mean a couple of bands playing at the same festival, and then hopefully that will attract a, a bigger crowd. And, and I think that's the way for us to to go about it at this stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I feel so bad that I missed that festival. Uh, Andrew held it in October, a time of the year when I can't really get away from Montreal. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know my kids are in school, and, and it becomes very yeah. complicated for me to get away. But uh, <laughs> Same I'm gonna, for us. I'm going to have to figure out <laughs> yeah. a way to get you here. If if Andrew can't do it, I'll, I'll have to do it myself. Um, yeah, you look, should. <laughs> yeah, please, absolutely. Please. Um, just before we end up, uh, are you doing any work with anybody else? Uh, you know, 
I mentioned Lionsville before, which is a uh, an album that, of course, um, Lars actually sings. actually two albums. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Did did Lars sing on both? Yep. Yeah. Okay. See, there you go. Um, I'll have to get the second one. I have the first one in front of me, but not the second yeah. one. Uh, was that his band, or was he sort of just lending his talents and then? Yep. Yeah. Okay. They, they, uh, they were, uh, I think, the, the the main writer is uh, Alessandro Leonetti, uh, uh, an yeah. Italian guy. He right. he heard Lars on the first work of art album mm -hmm. yeah. and really liked his voice. Uh, and he was a fan, so he contacted Lars. So he kind of lent his talent to that project. Uh, and I wrote a lot of lyrics for that album, for those albums, actually. Uh, so we both have been working on, on Lion Will. Okay. Well, that was yeah. a, that was a great project. So, um, what do, what's uh, what's up in two thousand fifteen, and then we'll uh, we'll end on that. Uh, where where yeah. can folks check you out? What are you going to be doing? Uh, uh, we have a bit of time off right okay. now, and uh, in the spring we'll go we're going to Spain for three concerts. Nice. So you should come. Absolutely. <laughs> I haven't been to Spain and. Yeah. God, like 1975. <laughs> it's been oh, long. Wow. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's about time then. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll play actually in Sweden uh, uh, at the Vesby Rock Festival. That's a great festival. Uh, in yeah, in July. Uh, so that'll be fun, and then we'll see. Yeah, I think uh, doesn't Vesby this year have also uh, ammunition and eclipse? Yep, and heat. Yeah, and heat and danger, danger. Oh, yeah, there are a lot of great bands. Magnum, Michael Schenker. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's time to go to Stockholm. <laughs> when is that again? Uh, July seventeen and eighteen. Oh, I'm yeah. free at that time. I'm on vacation. Perfect. You gotta come. <laughs> All right. If I yeah. come, can I be part of your uh, guest list? Of course. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, I gotta make it out there. But guys, this, this has been <laughs> a, a great pleasure, and I, I am so grateful that I um, was able to discover your band. Um, you know, uh, we are too. Framework is uh, there. There really is no word. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it really it, it's in for this genre of music. It is the perfect album. The melodies are what they should be. The music is what it should be. Uh, the, the you know the guitars are tasty or tasteful. I should say, uh, it's just. It's it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and and I really Thanks. hope folks uh, check it out. It really yeah. is a work of art. Thank you for saying that. And uh, you know, good luck, good luck, and uh, you know, thank you. I'll do whatever I can to get you over to Canada. I'll, I'll that'll be my uh, my promise to you. I'll, I'll work hard <laughs> and make it happen. And if not, I got to get to uh, the festival in Sweden because. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, such a pleasure. There you have it, folks. My interview with Work of Art, uh, Herman, the uh, drummer, and of course, Robert on guitars. Uh, Framework is a great, great album. If you haven't heard it, please uh, do yourself a favor and go check it out. But now, let us turn our attention to the sort of kiss uh, portion of the show. And I only say that because we are talking with John Thayer, who is the brother, of course, the current kiss guitarist, Tommy Thayer. Uh, John has a new album, Laurel Street, which you can go get on Amazon and on iTunes and anywhere where you can find uh, music. And uh, had a nice chat. Do you do you know John at all, Russ? I I don't. I don't uh, know him, or I don't know. Uh, but you've had a chance to check out the music. I I I didn't mind it. I thought it was like a little bit of a sting. Kind yeah. of sounding sting sounding kind of thing, and it's you know it's it's M O R for sure, oh, yeah. but it's uh, it's well done, you know absolutely. I I didn't even know he had a brother. Yeah, you, you know, well you know listen Tommy Tommy like as I said at the front of the show does great great stuff with uh, with Kiss, and mm -hmm. you know he gets criticized so often for having put on the spaceman makeup. Well, it's Ace's makeup, and mm. listen. We, you got to be honest. If Gene Simmons or Paul Stanley called you or me or Daryl Dwar or mm. Mike Tramp or anybody and said, right. put on the makeup and join our band and make a ton of money and travel the world, we would all go, yeah. oh, yeah, no, that's ace. No, of course not. We would say, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, we're yeah. in. I, I don't know. It's the, this is the problem with the, 
the internet and social media and everything today, everyone, it seems to be a lot of negativity uh, yep. when people have good things going, and it shouldn't be that way, especially with music. It should be a positive thing, and, you know, the guy's living his life, so, hey, and, and let, good him, for him. let him live. Yeah, good for him is right, and people should just lighten up. Yeah. It's, it's kind of disheartening to see when anybody says something good about some somebody like a press release or whatever and then i just read all this negative stuff it's yeah. like why are you if you're not into it why are you commenting on it just you know just, yeah, it just entertain me. it's entertainment we don't have the cure to cancer here let's just like everybody lighten up yeah and you know and if you're not into it just be not into it and and go be into something else go to the beatles page or go to a deaf leopard page and and, and tell them how much you love them there's just sort of no reason to hang around and say how much you hate it but yeah, well, it seems to be a theme in the last couple of years. <laughs> but, uh, again, I, I will say this for Eric Singer, and I will say this for Tommy Thayer. If it wasn't them in the band, it would be somebody else. And mm -hmm. what they did is the smart thing. They took it for themselves because we would all have taken it. Listen. I'm not yeah, gonna be. I'm not gonna pretend that had Paul Stanley not called me and said, "Do you want to be in the band?" That I would have said, "Oh no, no, I have a higher set of morals and ethics." <laughs> uh, I mean, give me a fucking break. Yeah, it's and, comedy. And excuse the language, you know, folks. Let Let's just rock and roll. But let's let's not stray too far from our focus on yeah. John. John was a great interview. Had a lot of great stories. Did we talk about Ace and and his brother and the spaceman makeup? Yes, we did. And he answered it very candidly, uh, more candidly than I was expecting, actually. I, I thought uh, I was going to get some kind of diplomatic answer, but mm -hmm. I got a really good, heartfelt answer. Uh, it, it wasn't bitchy or anything. It's just a good, heartfelt answer. So let's uh, sit back here and listen to John Thayer. Of course, the name Thayer is familiar to uh, KISS fans, as brother Tommy is part of that band. But uh, we're not here to talk about Tommy. We're here to talk about you, John. You actually do music there you go album. there you go yeah as well as well it should be yes absolutely and 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 i sort of want love, to get love, in. My, love my brother <laughs> you know i i think most people do a, he's doing a great job with kiss but uh, laurel street your ep uh yeah. came out a little over a year ago and if you're uh, you know, sort of a fan of Kiss, the music here is very different. So let, let's talk about the style of music. Um, how would you describe it? Sure. Well, Mitch, again, appreciate you uh, interviewing me today. Laurel Street is, I guess, best described as indie pop. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of melodic pop rock, but it's got a little bit of an indie vibe to it, um, just as far as the, the songwriting and the production. But I'd say, um, you know, it's easy listening pop. Um, we have a wide range of uh, demographics, people, you know, kids from, you know, 15 years old, teenagers up to people in their 60s or 70s seem to gravitate to the music. So it's kind of um, age um, agnostic, I guess. Yeah, which is great. Now, um, why just an EP? Why not a full album? Well, I... I've written a lot of songs over the years, and I have a, a dozen of songs kind of in, in the works, different stages of progress right now. But I'm kind of it kind of really has to do with my um, just kind of my my own liking. I, I really don't like to uh, put out something that's going to be um, overwhelming to people. And I think in today's world, where people are so busy and um, there's so many things to look at, see, listen to. Um, people have a very short uh, attention span these days, I think more than ever, um, compared to when I was growing up. So I think putting out a, a, a selection of songs, fewer songs where people can really appreciate six or seven songs versus 10, 12, or 15 songs kind of fits my personality, as I said earlier, but I also kind of think it kind of fits the times of where, where um, entertainment and, and content is moving these days. I don't think people have necessarily have the time to listen to a full record these days. I hate to say it because <laughs> I have, I have a huge record collection of all my favorites, but, um, so that, I guess it kind of plays into that. And I think at some point I, I probably will do a full record, but I'm just kind of putting out a uh, little vignette, six, seven song vignettes here over the next year or two to kind of test the waters and, and just see how things evolve. So, so let's talk about then, then Laurel street came out and you're putting out, 
little vignettes, as you said. When is the next installment of songs? How many songs? What's it called? And of course, we'll have to let people know how they can get all of this wonderful music. Sure. So the next EP will be released sometime in mid-February, and it's a six-song um, compilation. I think this next group of songs is, is similar to Laurel Street in, in that it's kind of an indie pop, melodic uh, pop type vein. These songs, uh, I would say, are, are lyrically maybe a little more sophisticated. And overall, I think the, the makeup of these songs is a little bit darker, uh, a little more moody than maybe the happy, little happier sound of some of the songs on, on, on Laurel Street. Um, so I'm really excited about this rec- record or this, this new EP. I think it's, it's a good um, transition for me from, from Laurel Street. And um, I'm looking forward to putting it out there. So it'll be uh, on the usual digital retail, um, of course, uh, iTunes and Amazon, and and you can access it through um, SoundCloud and and band uh, my Bandcamp page and these different places. CD Baby um, will be our main distributor for you know physical CDs. What will it be and, called? Um, again? It's called Take It Back. Take It Back. Okay. And, and yeah. so and there, there'll be two videos that will. Um, uh, two of the singles off the record that will be out on YouTube and I'm on the, the johnfairmusic.com website that will help be out there to help promote the EP. Oh, that's great. And now let me ask you, you know, your brother's career goes all the way back to, um, was it Black and Blue? 20, yes. 30 years back. How far back does your career go? Well, I I was kind of a, a wannabe musician for years i always really looked up to my brother and his talent playing guitar and but i always had a a real uh liking for music and i i always enjoyed listening to music of course but i never really played music or or wrote music until maybe maybe 15 years ago maybe 18 years ago now so my first foray was with a kind of a classic rock band here locally with some friends of mine and we just play local clubs play a lot of a lot of classic rock music, the doors and the Beatles and, and the who and, and different, different bands. And then, um, I started to write music maybe 15 years ago. And the first few songs I wrote were, were not very good. <laughs> I guess maybe for me, I thought they were kind of cool, but for most people, they weren't, they weren't very ri- well written songs in retrospect, but I just kept with it and started to improve and, and actually Tommy helped me on a few songs to kind of craft some of the arrangements and some of the chord structures, which helped. And, and then I just kind of developed my own style. Right. And, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of progressed from there. So I think the last maybe four or five years, I've really taken it more seriously. And in the last couple of years in particular, um, I've started to kind of find my, my way, you know, as far as some, what I feel are credible songs that, you know, are competitive out there in the marketplace. Right. Now, I know that you do a lot of uh, shows out in Oregon, but is there a chance that at some point you might uh, tour the States or even tour Canada? You know, I'd love to. Um, it just kind of depends on getting getting some traction with, with the songs. Um, I'm pitching songs um, for licensing um, opportunity, publishing licensing opportunities. I'm also doing some radio promotions with some triple a stations throughout the country right. and i'm um, just trying to get some traction somewhere so i can get some momentum behind it where where i'd support it would support uh a tour um or maybe um hooking on with uh, a more name name brand um song singer songwriter or band that that we could open up for uh, would definitely be open to that but it's just kind of a you know an evolving process and probably not quite ready for a, you know, a, a national or, or even Canadian type tour at this point. Right. Uh, although we did play a show in LA at the Whiskey Go Go last month, which was exciting. And, and so we're, we're just playing some different showcase events where it makes sense, but um, hopefully in the next year, there'll be some type of a tour. So let me ask you then, does it make it easier for a new band to get started when they can say, Hey, my brother is in a band like Kiss? Well, I try not or typically don't play that up too okay. much because the music is, is so much dissimilar. But, you know, I think it's it's certainly part of the storyline and I'm not, there's no uh, secret about it, obviously. And, you know, we talked about today and, and from the start of the interview. Um, so, but I, you know, I guess any artist 
you, you kind of want to make it on your own merits and, and you want people to like your music for the music and, and the lyrics and, and, um, you know, hopefully they enjoy watching your, you know, your, your live performance and you don't want people to like you just because your brother's, you know, in Kiss or your brother's in, um, whatever, you know, but some other, no, no, other band, Smith but, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, but on the other hand, it, it certainly doesn't hurt. And, um, I'm proud of the fact that Tommy's my brother. He's, he's a great friend and, you know, he's done a fabulous job with Kiss, the Kiss organization. I agree. And, um, so there, you know, definitely if it, if it, if it can help, then, um, you know, I, I definitely will talk about it. Is, is it okay then to ask you a couple of questions about Tommy or just your perceptions? Absolutely. Of so, you know, Tommy goes back to Kiss as far back as the Hot in the Shade days where, where he did a couple of work on a couple of songs, added some acoustic mm -hmm. guitars back in, what are we talking about? 89, I guess. Um, sure. When he came to you and said, Gene Simmons is looking at black and blue and I'm going to be doing the, a couple of, you know, strumming the guitar in a couple of songs. How excited was he and, and how exciting was it for you and the family to go, wow, this, my brother has now made it. He's not just playing the bars in LA anymore. He, he's getting to that next mm -hmm. level. Now, when he um, started working with Kiss or, or when he was still with Black and Blue? Uh, well, I, you know, there, there's sort of a, a a fine line there, right? Black and Blue was 86, 87, 88, and then there was the hot and the... Right. But, but how was it when he sort of first had that association? Then it was Gene. Let's, let's... We're Gene Simmons. Sure. Well, Gene, of course, produced the Nasty Nasty uh, record for mm -hmm. Black and Blue, and in fact, I was at some of the recording um, sessions with Gene as the producer um, for, for at least a couple days back in the, I think it must have been 80, I don't know, 87, 88, I right. guess. But um, it was real exciting. You know, I've always followed Tommy's career. I've always supported him. I've always gone out and, and been at the shows and been in the recording studio uh, when he was with Bruce Fairburn up in Vancouver um, mm -hmm. recording the second Black and Blue record. Um, but after Black and Blue dissolved and that, that whole thing um, kind of went by the wayside. And of course, Tommy went to work for Gene and Paul just real informally. And we thought that was exciting. And, you know, it was great that they respected Tommy enough to want him to come to work for them, just doing odd jobs. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily music stuff at the time, but they trusted him and liked him. And he, he's a hard worker and, and a smart, smart guy. And he kind of just, you know, gained their trust over time and became more involved with, with the KISS organization. And of course, you know, I guess 2003 officially joined the band as, as the lead guitarist. And, mm -hmm. and I think he's done, done a great job helping that band to, to kind of keep relevant in a, in a, in a very competitive, changing, changing market. Oh, absolutely. And for you personally, what do you learn from those experiences? You, you just said you were in the studio for, for the black and blue. And do you, do you pick up? how to put an album together. Is that a, a learning moment for you? Yeah, I think so. You know, anytime um, I've been in the studio with Tommy, it's, it's definitely been a learning experience just sitting there, uh, taking it all in, you know, listening and, and, and trying to understand um, how, how, you know, you craft a record and all the different takes and the different tracks and, and the producer and the engineer have, you know, have an influence on, on how things are recorded and, and um, how they want that to mesh together when they when they go to the mixing stage. So yeah, a lot of that, a lot of what I do now in terms of producing my own records, um, you know, I'm sure that those influences and those experiences with Tommy over the years definitely helped to uh, you know craft my my talent in that area. You know, as far as um, producing producing a record, a lot that goes into it for sure. Yeah, there really is, and and what a great point of view you must have to to be in the studio because. You're not learning from a band that's a rookie by any stretch of the imagination. You're learning from one of the greatest rock bands ever how to construct something. So what an incredibly um, fortunate situation to be in, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time in the studio with, with Black and Blue or, you know, or any really any time, per se, with Kiss. But those early years with Black and Blue definitely helped to... Uh, you know, give me the, the, the experience, some experience and a little bit of know-how on, on how, how things are done. You know, there's no question. Now, brothers are, for the most part, competitive. Um, 
when you're making your own music, is it just out of sheer joy or at some point you say, boy, I want to show my brother how to do this or I want the fans to like me just, is there any competitive, are you guys, I got to be better than you or is that not happening? Not really. Um, okay. I don't feel that way. I don't, I don't see Tommy feeling that way either. I think it's more of a, you know, kind of mutual admiration. And of course I'm on a, Tommy's on a whole different stage than I am as far as, um, you know, credibility and notoriety. <laughs> so I guess for me, it's more of a kind of setting goals and kind of striving to become what he has become in terms of um, a notable figure in the music industry and, and the recording industry mm -hmm. and, the, and the performance side of things. So there's, there's that a part of it where I, I have a drive and a, and a desire to become, you know, become better known and to get more people to appreciate what I'm doing. But, you know, as far as a competitive thing or, or playing one off against the other, I don't, I don't think there's really any of that, at least I'm sure from my perspective. And I know from Tommy's as well, we're okay. both very supportive of each other. And, and, uh, you know, the music that I do is so much different than, yeah. than, than the Kiss music, but you know, Tommy's a great singer songwriter in his own right. So he, he's very talented and has a, a real diverse range of different music styles aside from Kiss as well. So maybe some point he would, you know, be able to put more of that on display outside of the Kiss realm at some point. Uh, after you've done these three EPs, is there going to be a point where you're going to put them all together? And I know I asked this sort of a question that's similar before, but are you looking to get a long play or do you really think the EP is, is sort of the new format that we need to go with? I think eventually, you know, if I got a major label involved, we, we probably do a, a full length, uh, you know, CD, you know, 11, 12 songs, I would, I would guess. But I, I think um, in the meantime, I'm going to stick with this, this EP uh, strategy. And I actually have a fourth EP that, wow. um, or third, a third one that we're finishing up. And then a fourth one that we laid drum tracks for in Nashville a couple months ago that will start, start really to develop those songs in the studio. And, and then I've, you know, I've got new stuff that I'm working on all the time. So I don't know how it's going to evolve, but I do know that I love writing songs. I love recording songs. I love producing a, a record or an EP. I love playing live and I'm trying to get better. You know, every, we did this show in LA and, you know, I thought my vocal performance wasn't great. You know, it's kind of hard on myself, but I, it was kind of a humbling experience. And I knew, I knew what I did wrong and I know what I can do better. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to improve, you know, and, and just see how, see what happens. You know, everybody would love to have their music or their art known by other people but the journey is really more what, what I guess I appreciate. And I just love the people that I'm working with and I love the experience. And if, you know, if, if a song or a, a record somehow gains more notoriety, that would be awesome. Right. But um, it's not like if that doesn't happen, I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, by doing the different EPs, are there any noticeable changes? Is one EP more lyrically different than the other? Is one more rock and the other one more indie pop? Or is it sort of, just different collections to reflect different periods in your life. Um, I think a little bit of, of all of that, but okay. I think the, uh, like I said, the second EP take it back, which will be out in February is a little more introspective, a little bit more moody, a little darker. Um, the third EP, which will probably be released later this year is frankly a little more pop. It's a little okay. more upbeat and um, a little more fun in a way. Um, and a lot of um, some real current sounds, I guess, from a production standpoint, the fourth EP, I think, maybe is going to be more guitar-oriented. Uh, a couple of the songs have a real Neil Young vibe to it, so maybe a little retro-type vibe in that regard. Um, but, you know, we're still in the, in the working phases of that fourth, that fourth EP. It's still evolving. So, But they're definitely still pop, pop songs, but maybe a little bit more on the, on the guitar side for the fourth EP versus the third EP, which is turning out to be a little bit more synth and um, a little more poppy in that regard. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing all of them. Of course, if anybody wants to check uh, this out, they can, I guess, go to johnthayermusic.com. Is there anywhere else where, where folks should find you? I think that's the best place. That's a good starting point, just to keep it simple. And you can um, segue off to my Facebook page or, you know, the videos are there. You can listen to the to the current uh, Laurel Street release. Yep. Uh, soon, soon to be, uh, site will soon be updated with some of the new songs here in the next month. 
but that that's definitely the place to go john thayer music.com yeah absolutely and if i may i'll ask you just one final question about uh about kiss and your brother uh and then you know a lot of a lot of the fans have complained about him putting on the makeup what have your discussions with your brother been about that? Is it something that hurts him or that when people say that? What do you think about it? I mean, I know it's the, the sort of the million dollar question that nobody wants to answer, but. Sure. Well, I think it's a, a valid point that people bring up, um, you know, Kiss uh, back in the seventies and eighties and, and even nineties was, was uh, a lot of different, you know, lineups over the years, of mm-hmm. course. And, and Ace Freely, you know, was really the one of the pioneers of the band, so mm-hmm. he deserves all that credit and more. Um, things have changed, and and you know, decades have gone by, and I think Tommy's just trying to step in and, and play the role the best way possible, and add some of his own signature, um, you know, personality to to that that role of, of the spaceman in the in the band Kiss. So I think I'm sure it probably you know bothers him sometimes to read some of that stuff, but. On the other hand, you know, people, fans are entitled to their opinion. And I know he respects the people that are real big Ace Freely Kiss fans. And, mm-hmm. and um, you know, it is what it is. So I think he just, Tommy just looks at it more um, in, in, in terms of this is where Kiss is today. And, and I'm, I feel like I'm a big part of it. And, and uh, I respect the people that, that uh, you know, feel like the old Kiss is, is really uh, what, what drives their engine. You know, that, yeah. that's. I think that's probably the way he looks at it. I know from what he's told me in the past, because we've had those discussions. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have. And first, first of all, as a fan of, of Kiss and of Tommy's, uh, I'm on his side. I think that if Gene or Paul called me or you or any of the fans that complain and said, hey, come and join us, we would all say, yeah, all our pontificating would go right out the window and we'd be, uh, yeah, I'll be there too. So you know, I, sure. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and I think, uh, Tommy, you know, has, has done a great job with Kiss and brought a lot of new energy and, and Absolutely. a lot of expertise, not only on stage, but behind the scenes. Absolutely. Um, I know he works really well with, with Gene and Paul and, and Eric, and they all seem to get along pretty darn well, which is really, really cool. I think that's one of the things that makes the current lineup so successful is that those guys really work together, you know, and they're all pretty much on the same page, oh. you know, which is, not always been the case with with Kiss and with with uh, frankly most bands with, with most bands <laughs> and, and uh, over the years and, and we'll just end on this. But as a brother, though, when you see people in the media or fans or say these things that are sometimes ex- exceptionally offensive, does does that hurt or is it you just sort of take it with a grain of salt? Like, hey, that's the game, that's the business. You just got to live with it. Or do you actually does it does it pull at your heart and go, oh, that's not nice. No, I, I, I read a lot of that stuff um, the on the web and different places, but, you know, it is what it is. And, and again, like I said before, those people are enti- entitled to their, their feelings and their opinion. And and um, some of the comments are somewhat idiotic. You just have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. And yeah. um, it doesn't really bother me. I think I'm sure sometimes it probably does bother Tommy some, but I think he's trying to take the high road and kind of look at the bigger picture and, when you look at it in that context, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's that, that, that important, you know? Yeah. I, I've just always tried to think of it. If it was my brother or my kids or whatever, and they were in that position, I I don't know how well I'd be able to take that. So, you know, kudos to, to you and, and your family for not uh, letting it bother you more than that. Anyway, uh, back to the Laurel Street EP. It is out now, johnthayermusic.com. John, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope I didn't ask too many Kiss questions. but No, uh, not at all, Mitch. I really enjoyed the conversation. I certainly Very encourage good. people to to check it out, pick it up, go to the YouTube page, go to the, the website, the Facebook page, and... Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of great music. I, I, I listen to the stuff, and I was impressed. It is not Kiss music, but it is just really well put together. So, you know, oh, good thank job. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate it. And got some new, new stuff coming up. I take it back. EP will be out in, in a month or so, and so continue to, to look for new new material as things evolve. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, John. Great pleasure. Thanks, Mitch. Bye-bye you now. Bet. Pleasure. Bye-bye. There you have it, folks, my interview with John Thayer, talking about his Laurel Street EP, and of course his brother who is in KISS, the one and only Tommy Thayer. Um, Tommy, of course, we've said it about ten times on the show so far, does an incredible job 
Uh, you know, Russ, I didn't ask you, have you seen Kiss with uh, Tommy on guitar? I actually haven't. You know, I've seen uh, YouTube stuff and uh, some of the, you know, stuff that they've done, uh, that, what, that football yeah. thing. And, you know, I think they do a great job. And, and like you said, it, if it wasn't uh, them, uh, him and him and Eric, it'd be somebody else. And, and Eric's such a great guy. And I don't really know. I don't know Tom, but but uh, Eric's great. You know, I met Eric through you actually, and uh, when he was in Alice Cooper, and he's just the uh, uh, sweetest cat, you know, and does a great yeah. job. <laughs> no pun intended. Sweetest right? cat, get it? Oh, <laughs> oh he's got you. nothing to lose. Got nothing to lose. Which is a great song. You, of course, you do a great version on the A World with Heroes EP. There you and, go. Uh, go out and buy it, people. Come on, it's for yeah. a good cause. And of course, the uh, new Kiss, uh, the song "Shout Mercy" from the Monster album was also covered on the A World with Heroes album, and uh, that's a great version. But uh, yeah. there you go. Let's let's plug stuff here. Uh, you there know, you if you, uh, you want to check out work of art and Herman and Robert, they have mm-hmm. a website. It is w o a dot s e uh, for Sweden. So in just work of art w o a Dot se and you can find out more about work of art for more about john thayer you head over to his facebook facebook.com forward slash john thayer music all one word uh, facebook.com john thayer music and russ listen i'll just do this for you since i'm on a roll we've got right. uh, facebook.com forward slash russ dwarf so if you want to read more about russ and in fact, if you can go up there uh, right now, you have uh, posted the M3 Festival poster, and we can see that you're playing cool. on a date with Europe, Tom Kiefer. This is May 2nd, Saturday, May 2nd, Queensryche, Winery Dogs, Warren, Crocus, LA Guns, Vixen, Black and Blue, which coincidentally is Tommy Thayer's former band. Um, wow. uh, Taiketo, Rhino Bucket, Y&T. Man, that's, that is some it's show. Gonna be- Jesus it's going to be an Christ. awesome day, man. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be in course, May. It's Daryl Dwarf's birthday. Let's do it. Yeah, and of course, Eddie Trunk will be emceeing that whole event. <laughs> and if people want to follow you on Twitter, just it's at Russ Dwarf. Or follow Russ on at Russ Dwarf. And if you want to follow me, it is at Mitch Lafon on Twitter. So there you have it, folks. Uh, awesome. Everything you need to know and all the places you need to find us is there. Russ, always a pleasure. We certainly need to do this more often now that our schedules match. We can certainly uh, put some more shows together. And listen, some of the bands that have been pitched to me that I'm hoping to get finalized and on the show include Lemmy of Motorhead, oh. um, Dennis D. Young, formerly of Styx, Hall & Oates, um, boy, uh, who else was offered to me recently? Michael Sweet of Striper, uh, just a bunch of great guests that have been offered to me. Hopefully, between me, myself, the publicist, and all that, we can make all of this work out. But, Russ, I know you will want to be on some of those episodes co host Absolutely. I'm looking forward to uh, a great year with you again. And, uh, you know, you always bring the great interviews, and yep. and it's it's always great to talk to you, man. Yeah, and so uh, i got to get out to uh, the M3 show on that Saturday, May 2nd. I am definitely going to be in Ottawa for you and Mike Tramp because that is a, a must on May 31st. Yeah, well, hang, man. At the Bourbon Street, the new the new Bourbon Street. Scotty. With Scotty, yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so there you have it. There you have it, awesome. folks. Uh, do yourself a favor. Check out Work of Art Framework Made My Top 14 of 2014 album list. If I liked it, Chances are you'll like it. Right, Russ? That's that how it works? That's abso- absolutely right. See? Have a good one, brother. Thank you, sir. Cheers.